Welcome to episode 172 of the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I'm Ashley Scott Myers, screenwriter and blogger over at SellingYourScreenplay.com. Today I'm interviewing Martin Koolhoven, who just did a Western called Brimstone. He's originally from the Netherlands, and he built his reputation as a director locally first, and has now started to write and direct films for the international market. He started with short films and slowly worked his way up, and we dig into his entire career from getting that first break right up to his most recent film. So stay tuned for that. If you find this episode valuable, please help me out by giving a review in iTunes or leaving a comment on YouTube or retweeting the podcast on Twitter or liking it on Facebook. These social media shares really do help spread word about the podcast, so they're very much appreciated. Any websites or links that I mentioned in the podcast can be found on my blog in the show notes. I also publish a transcript with every episode in case you'd rather read the show or look at something later on. You can find all the podcast show notes at www.sellingyourscreenplay.com slash podcast. And then just look for episode number 172. If you want my free guide, How to Sell a Screenplay in Five Weeks, you can pick that up by going to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. It's completely free. You just put in your email address and I'll send you a new lesson once per week for five weeks along with a bunch of bonus lessons. I teach the whole process of how to sell your screenplay in that guide. I'll teach you how to write a professional logline and query letter and how to find agents, managers, and producers who are looking for material. Really is everything you need to know to sell your screenplay. Just go to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. A quick few words about what I'm working on. So once again, the main thing I'm working on is post-production on my crime action thriller feature film, The Pinch. So not a lot to report this week, but I've just about got my entire post-production team in place, and now it's just a matter of letting them do their thing. I got my sound designer and special effects guy all set last week, which basically meant just getting them all the files, the digital files that they need to do their job. I had a long meeting with my sound designer going over all the sound elements in the film. He has a lot of really cool creative ideas about how to make the film sound really pop so that's exciting just to hear that and and see that come together and I got my composer off and running last week too so that's moving ahead my colorist actually got back to me last week with a first pass of the color correction and color grading so I think that's on track as well so now I've just got to basically let these guys do their thing and um, you know I'll be checking in with them occasionally but um, really now I just kind of let them do their thing they're all these people um, you know they're experts at their particular craft and um, just want to give them the time to allow them to do a really great job so that's what I'm working on now let's get into the main segment today I'm interviewing writer director Martin Kuhlhoven here is the interview Welcome, Martin, to the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I really appreciate you coming on the show with me today. Hello. Uh, nice, uh, nice coming on the show. Thanks for, thanks for having me. Thank you. So to start out, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your background, kind of how did you get into the entertainment industry? Um, well, I was, uh, as, a, as a child, I was already, you know, completely bunkers about, over movies and uh at some point, uh, I started to realize that the uh, movies were, you know, actually made, and instead of just, you know, thing, uh, things that were thought up by the actors as uh, you know as they go along. Uh -huh. So uh, uh, I think at some point, I think I must have been seventeen or eighteen or something like that, that I sort of started to slowly dare to say that I uh, that I might want to be do something in the entertainment industry and. Uh, then at first I went to uh, to um, uh, a, a type of a film school, but not the not the film academy in Holland. Uh, first time I actually uh, wanted to go there, I wasn't accepted. So I, then I went to Belgium, and I, then I was on that was a, they had a film academy as well. I stayed there for a year, and after a year, I decided to go to Amsterdam and try it again, and then I got accepted and. Then I was in film school, and from film school, actually, I, when I came off film school, I actually started working in media. I was one of the lucky ones. Okay, perfect, perfect. Let's dig into your most recent film, Brimstone. Maybe to start out, you can give us a quick pitch or a logline for the film. Yeah, it's um, it's yeah, it's it's a movie um, about uh, Liz, who is a young woman who lives in the, in the, in the old west, and she. Uh, well, she seems quite happy, and she's got a family. Uh, um, but things go terribly wrong when there is a new uh, reverend uh, in her church, and she immediately recognizes his voice, and and and, and you can see on her that she realizes that you know that this is this is bad news. And the movie basically is about how she 
yeah, what she has to go through and what she has to do in able to, uh, to, uh, uh, to, to survive and to have her, uh, 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 her, her family survive. And uh, um, uh, it's a movie in four chapters, and, and, and it also tells uh, how things, you know, the, the events that led up to how things are the way they are. Mm-hmm. Where did this idea come from? Um, um, it, 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 it was very strange, actually. I, I started out uh, when I, at my la- the movie I did before was called Winter and Wartime, which was very successful um, in, in where I come from. And uh, I had done several movies that were quite uh, uh, um, uh, successful, but this one really uh, uh, topped them all. And uh, it was sold well. It did well on the on 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 uh, uh, on on, uh, on the video market in uh, in America. And if, you know what happens then is that you know uh, well, Hollywood started calling, and in, and in England started calling, and that sort of got me warmed up to the idea of doing a movie in uh, in the English language, an international movie. Mm-hmm. And um, and I had said no to so many scripts. Uh, and at some point, some producer said to me, uh, uh, you know, okay, but what is it that you would want to do? And I, I joked and I said, you know, I would like to do Western. And then he said, yeah, well, why don't you? And then I, I, I started thinking, I said, yeah, why, why don't I? This was actually before um, uh, Tarantino even announced uh, um, Django Unchained. So it was completely not on vogue to do a Western. And uh, uh, but it, it did drop, it did start me thinking, and I thought that yeah, if I was going to do a, 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 an English spoken movie, then maybe it sh- maybe it should be a western because I mean I know quite a lot of the period, I've seen a lot of movies, and I would feel much more comfortable writing a, um, a, 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 a some, somehow an historical piece about a period that I know a lot about than I would you know if, if I would do a, a contemporary movie in New York or whatever. Mm-hmm. So that's where I, that's where it started, and then I started thinking, okay, um, uh, oh, you know, what is it that I like about westerns? What is it? And, and then I came to the idea that you know, it's it's this sort of boyish idea of adventure and everything's possible. And it's almost an anarchy that you that, you know, which is really attractive to uh, especially men. But then I also then I realized and I thought, you know, this is this is uh, that's of course only the half of the truth. This is you know. Uh, this is purely uh, from a male uh, a male perspective, and I realized that actually, you know, the the, the myth of the of the old West is, the, is is a complete macho myth. And when I realized that, I thought, okay, I have to do a movie which shows the the other side, which shows you know, who has a more uh, feminine point of view. And so that was one one part of it. And the other part was that I I you know I had when I had decided to to write the Western, I was also intimidated by the fact that there are so many great ones. Mm-hmm. And I felt that if I was going to do something which had, you know, any meaning or value or, you know, could contribute anything to the genre, it had to be something personal and it had to be something that had a lot to do with my cultural inheritance. And so I came to the, uh, I was brought up uh, religious and, and uh, uh, the Calvinist belief is a, is a, a very, uh, how do you say that, uh, strong influence on, uh, on, on, on the Dutch society as we know it now. So I decided to uh, to combine those two things, and that's basically where uh, where uh, 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 Brimstone sprouted from. Yeah. Now I'm curious. Sort of the the typical thing you hear from distributors are that westerns don't play overseas. Obviously, they can play well in America, um, and it sounds like you're very well versed and have seen a lot of these movies. And yet you're from Europe. Are you atypical because you're you know? really into film you went and you know watched all of these western movies growing up do a lot of europeans do yeah. they enjoy these westerns well the thing is that uh, i think it is in the last years i think uh, 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 uh the westerns haven't been so successful uh not only overseas i, I don't think there have been a lot of movies that were uh, westerns that were successful in america to be true for either Mm-hmm. But the people in the movie industry, uh, you know, especially film, you know, filmmakers, writers, and directors, and actually also actors, they have always loved the genre. And 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 I think they, uh, the moment I said I was going to do a western, I haven't had so many. Uh, all actors I know, you know, uh, texted me and said I want to be in it, and everybody thought it was a wonderful idea. And I think that is what it always has been. It is, you know, uh, uh, the door seems shut, but the moment. You know, there seems to be a little crack or a little little opening, and you know, then I think all filmmakers will jump into it because it's, I think it's the greatest genre there is, and I think most filmmakers think that. 
and uh, uh, any, 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 you know, at the moment uh, uh, something, you know, there's a you know, one that is a little bit successful than everybody, you know, you know, hopes that they get their their western. I mean, most, I mean, Scorsese has said that he wanted to do a western. Uh, uh, Park Chan Wook has uh, uh, said he wanted to do a western. I think any any uh, director wants to do a western. I think. Yeah, yeah, but do you think just the average European audience is interested in this? Yeah, well, they, I I don't know where the idea comes from that uh, uh, that they're not. I mean, mm-hmm. in, when westerns were really popular, they were extremely popular in the, in Europe. I mean, at, actually, they were more popular when when uh, in the early '60s uh, they were they were dead in America, and it was in and it was in Italy that that you know brought back the the food spaghetti western. And then later, uh, it, you know, the, with Peck and Paw and all those guys, I think mm-hmm. back in, uh, in America as well. But uh, 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 I, I, I don't see. I think you know, it's. it's I think it's a it's a conception of Americans is that you know because um, it is of course an American genre that that maybe Europeans don't uh, uh, don't like them so much. But the thing is, of course, is that uh, uh, to us. It's not pure. It's not purely American. It's you know because the 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 the, the people that were actually there at that time, you know, were European. So it's mm-hmm. it's it's somehow you know a, a thing that connects connects us. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about your writing process a little bit. Um, how much time, as you were coming up with this idea, I'd just be curious to kind of get a sense of how much time do you spend preparing to write versus actually opening up final draft and writing the script. Oh, I do a lot of I do a lot of uh, I I start reading about things. I start uh, watching movies that have sort of uh, thematically uh, got something to do with it. Um, uh, I do a lot of preparation in that sense, and then I actually I postpone the actual writing as long as possible. I mean, I'm, I'm I know there I'm. I don't think I'm a very good example when it comes to uh, uh, to, to writing. I'm I'm, I'm not a I'm not a. I always say I've got the soul of a filmmaker. I don't necessarily have the soul of a writer. I mm-hmm. I, I I write because I want to make movies, and I'm not very uh, professional. And uh, you know, to 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 write every day. I know it goes. You know, very, sometimes I write a lot. Sometimes I write less. And it, it, I'm very. Uh, uh, it's hard to predict in that sense, but I mean, it. it and it's also it, I, when I did when I started writing this script, I hadn't. I hadn't written anything uh, from scratch in a long time. I'd, I'd written uh, a, a script, screenplay together with two other ones that was based on a book, and I've rewritten other scripts. But uh, the, the the script that was, you know, from 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 uh, from a complete blank page, the, 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 I think it was ten years before that I did that. So mm-hmm. I was I was quite rusty as well. You know, it's like I think it is like a muscle. If you haven't done a lot about it, then you know you you, know, you get sloppy. So it was a lot of. Uh, it took me quite a long time to uh, uh, to actually uh, uh, write it. Yeah, let's talk about your development process a little bit. I'm always curious just to hear how writers um, work with other people. So once you're sort of done your first draft and you send it to, do you have a few close friends that you send it to? Do you have an agent, a manager, producers? And then how do you interpret those notes? How do you kind of look at those notes and decide which ones to implement? Yeah. Uh, well, I, the first one I uh, um, I, I let things write was um, uh, as my producer. I um, uh, I own a company uh, that produces uh, my movies now. I didn't always, but now, and uh, and I'm the writer director and she's the producer. So that's sort of the, the first one I, I let things read. Uh, or it is my my girlfriend who is also uh, a filmmaker. Mm-hmm. So, but um, uh, it's it's. Um, I have a, a bunch of people that I that I trust and that I uh, 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 I value and, and I let them read it. But actually, it's I, it's it's uh, um, more difficult to uh, uh, to get uh, at some point when you're a little bit further to get uh, a critique that uh, what I what, for instance what I, what I did now is that. Um, I um, got some people that I know, but I don't know them very, very well. But I, I respect them, you know, because some of them are authors for, for novels, and some of them are producers, and, and you know. Mm-hmm. And I and I thought, you know, let's 
bring a couple of these people together and uh, let them read the script and then let them talk about it and see, you know, uh, uh, and they can be as tough as they want to be but th- th- j- because I'm not going to be there. So I have my editor, I have the same, and, and I mean movie editor, film editor, mm-hmm. who I have always, you know, I have had since I started. I did all my movies with him. And he sort of monitored that and and he um, then told me what those people uh, thought, and that you know then then they could be as tough as they wanted to be, like that that sort of stuff that I I come up with to uh, uh, to to uh, to uh, you know, uh, better the script. Mm-hmm. And I get in, and I also I got in, uh, uh, I got Franco Ferrini, who is the is the writer. Uh, for instance, is one of the writers of Once Upon a Time in America, and he and he also wrote for Dario Argento. And, I got him in at some point. Oh. I got uh, to 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 uh, and, and uh, I got um, a script doctor from Britain that is I think she did Shakespeare in Love. I got so I, I, anything mm-hmm. to uh, to uh, you know to to uh, get that script to become better. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, um, how can people see Brimstone? Do you know what the release schedule is going to be like? In America, you mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's coming out the uh, 10th of March, and it's okay. going to be in selected theaters. It's it's it's, uh, it's it's quite a small theatrical release, and then it's also going to be on uh, <coughs> on VOD at the same okay. time. Okay, perfect, perfect. Well, Martin, I really appreciate your coming on and talking with me today. Um, thank you very much, and good luck with the film. Okay, thank you. Thank bye you. bye. Bye. We'll talk to you later. Just want to mention two things I'm doing at Selling Your Screenplay to help screenwriters find producers who are looking for material. First, I've created a monthly newsletter that will be sent directly to producers. Every member of SYS Select can submit one logline per newsletter. I went and emailed my large database of producers and asked them if they would like to receive this monthly newsletter of pitches. So far, I have well over 350 producers who have signed up to receive it. These producers are hungry for material and happy to read scripts from new writers. So if you want to participate in this pitch newsletter and get your script into the hands of lots of producers, sign up at sellingyourscreenplayselect.com. And secondly, I've partnered with one of the premier paid screenwriters leads sites so I can syndicate their leads to SYS select members. There are lots of great leads coming in each week from our partner. Recently, we've been getting eight to 10 high quality paid leads per week. These are producers and production companies who are actively looking to buy material or are looking to hire a screenwriter for a specific project. If you sign up for SYS select, you'll get these leads emailed directly to you several times per week. These leads run the gamut from production companies looking for a specific type of spec script to producers looking to hire a screenwriter to write up one of their ideas. Producers are looking for shorts, features, TV, and web series pilots. So it's a huge array of different types of projects that these producers are looking for. And these leads are exclusive to our partner and SYS Select members. To sign up, just go to sellingyourscreenplayselect.com. On the next episode of the podcast, I'm going to be interviewing Barbara Morgan. She is the founder of the Austin Film Festival. They're doing a new contest this year for fictionalized podcast scripts, which are basically radio plays. I had not heard of this before talking with Barbara, so it was was interesting to learn about a new market for screenwriters. There are a number of these now out there in the podcast world where they're basically fictionalized stories that, you know, writers have written up and then actors will perform the voices and then they they get through the same channels basically that this podcast is going through which is you know iTunes and and Stitcher and there's some really high quality ones and we'll talk through those Um, we'll talk about those next week and we'll also talk through some of the challenges that writers in this medium may face Um, Barbara and the Austin Phil Festival they are very um, optimistic about this as a growing market for screenwriters and that's why they're trying to kind of get ahead of the curve and launch this contest for um, podcast fictionalized podcast scripts so it's just great to see that there's new with changing technologies you know there's new markets and new places that potentially screenwriters can sell their work so this is great news for all of us Um, I would encourage everybody to check out this episode next week again this is something that I really knew nothing about before talking to Barbara but um, after talking with her I think I have a kind of a good understanding and it's kind of gets the wheels turning you know in in my own my own creativity start thinking about some potential ideas for podcast visualized podcast stories so keep an eye out for that episode next week 
to wrap things up, I just want to touch on a few things from today's interview with Martin. So I think the big lesson for me is this whole idea of to start locally and build a rep reputation there. There's a couple of things that you'll find that are advantages if you're writing for a local market, but they end up being disadvantages if you are not from Hollywood and you're trying to break in to Hollywood. And those things are the language differences and cultural differences. If you are trying to write scripts in English and English is not your native language, you're, you're always going to be kind of going upstream on that. And it's going to be very difficult for a reader to just pick up your script and kind of see through those language problems. Whereas if you're, you're submitting scripts to a local market and you're writing in your native language, those things are going to be an advantage. There's probably not as many scripts being submitted to producers in the local language, and there is going to be some filmmaking community. So again, that can be an advantage for you. Same thing with cultural differences. There may, thing, may be things that make perfect sense to you, um, whether that's the family structure or neighborhoods or how government works. Any of these sort of cultural things may be very specific, and the way you understand them may not necessarily be the way that other people understand them outside of your area. And again, if those things are in your script, they can be stumbling blocks to a reader in Hollywood trying to understand sort of where you're coming from. Again, though, they can be advantages. If you're submitting those things to local producers, all of these things can be advantages. The local producers, if he gets a, a script written from someone that's not in your local area, that's going to seem like the oddball script, not your script. Your script is going to make perfect sense to them. So I would really, really consider trying to find a local filmmaking community and try and work your way up there. Um, it's just, it's a great way to go and again Martin I think is a great example have success in your local filmmaking community and you will ultimately be, be able to break onto the international scene the big argument that I get from writers when I suggest this is that their local filmmaking community is close is too hard to break into it's sort of a closed network and um, you know they don't like necessarily the movies that they're trying to write <clears throat> Again, I would really encourage you to take a step back and think this through. While your local filmmaking community may not be easy to break into, Hollywood ain't easy to break into either. And especially when you compound it with some of these other issues like the language and the cultural differences that you may be battling. So again, I would say take a hard look at your local filmmaking community and really think about that. Um, I think in most instances you're going to find it's probably better to go to a local filmmaking community than try and branch out and go to Hollywood. And when I say this too, I'm really talking about countries where English is not your primary language. If you speak fluent English, you're probably in pretty good shape. Obviously people in the UK, Australia, where English, there may be some small cultural differences, but between the UK, the Australia and the US, there may be some differences there, but because of the language, because these folks speak fluent English, there may be cultural differences, but um, the language is not going to be an issue. And so I think for the most part, uh, American readers in Hollywood could probably read a script in the UK and they could kind of understand that there may be some cultural differences, but because the language would all be there, um, probably your chances of breaking in would be would be okay um, as opposed to going upstream and trying to write something that's not in your native tongue again if you speak fluent English you're probably in pretty good shape but if your English is not fluent I would highly encourage you to look locally for your local filmmaking community see if you can't break into that I've written a couple of blog posts on this exact topic so I will link to those in the show notes so if you're somebody who is not from the United States and you're trying to break into Hollywood I would say definitely check out these two blog posts because they go into some sort of more detail on, on what I'm talking about here. Anyway, that's the show. Thank you for listening.